This video is a little bit overdue, but I figured it was perfect time to discuss the top five tips that I would recommend every single player in Call of Dragons, no matter what tier of player you are, free to play, pay to win, uh lazy active whatever just follow these tips and you'll notice a considerable uh, difference in your call of dragons experience <coughs> what is up guys meow we're here back with a brand new call of dragons video before we get this video started first of all kindly do please drop a like don't forget to subscribe because it really helps me and it really helps out the channel it won't take you any longer than a couple of seconds and be sure to check out the video that uh, ploto posted uh, today or at the date of the the day of, of me posting this video i will leave the link to it in the description and you'll notice a card appearing on your screen right now be sure to check it out support ploto he's a bro and it's a really good video to help you out to kickstart your season so that out of the way let's get started so the number one tip I would highly recommend in Call of Dragons when you are playing the game is always keep your cues full in uh, for training, for policies, for research if you have anything to research, and for buildings. Now, what I mean by that is that you always want to be training uh, troops as much as possible. There is no threshold of troops you can have in Call of Dragons. Plus, the more troops you have, the better it will be for your hospital capacity because hospital capacity scales with your legion amount all the way up to 2 million uh, troops. So you always want to be training troops no matter what. Pairing with that, uh, I wouldn't recommend you start upgrading your troops uh, until you have unlocked your t4s and there is an sle going on in the troop training stage that is the only time i would highly recommend you start rushing to upgrade your troops otherwise training new troops is just that much more valuable for the reasons mentioned before tip number two i would recommend is when you are farming your darklings or dark creatures to maximize whether if you're wanting to maximize xp or maximize dark uh not dark uh, arcane dust in order to level up your um artifacts so what you want to do is that you want to pick out the certain commanders that you feel like you will be working on for the early on duration of the season because uh, right now it has been removed the ability to gain xp for deputies uh, when gathering so your xp sources are kind of limited to just darklings and dark creatures uh, as well as sometimes forts xp books and as well as the dragon trail uh, so you want to pick out the main your main five marches i would say for example, I'm running, uh, I have my core 10 commanders at level 50 right now. Since level 50 is the cap, I'm waiting for the August Storm to open uh, so I can level them up with XP. So I've picked up my main marches, uh, all of them that have above average high skills, plus they complement my playstyle perfectly. So I've picked them out and I rushed them all to level 50. So I highly recommend you do the same. Uh, for the rest of the commanders, you can start leveling them up if you have free time and have free CP but uh, otherwise i would just wouldn't recommend touching other commanders for your second season at least for your first season you can try upgrading all the commanders all the way up just so you can have those pop-up bundles that appear if you are a spender uh, for the legendary commanders especially at level 30 40 and 50 respectively for each commander as they are a once in a lifetime purchase Tying with that, in terms of commanders, you should also pick out the five core artifacts you're going to be using for your commanders. Uh, currently, Viola's Bow is a bit of a temporary fifth option for me. I don't know what I'm going to replace it with. Eventually, maybe I'll put in Heart of Kamasai or Viola's Bow. That is why it's level 20, while the other four core that I've already picked out for my main marshes are all level 40, and they will all be level 50 pretty soon. Tip number three would be the Dragon Trail. I see so many people neglect the Dragon Trail after the initial start of the season and they just completely forget about it and they don't even bother pushing at it. For example, if you look at my server, most of these players have just completely abandoned the Dragon Trail and stopped pushing those uh, stars anymore. While in reality, it's actually pretty beneficial from the amount of stuff it gives. For example, you're guaranteed getting uh, the Dragon Glass, which you can use to eventually skill up Indus. And then after your Indus is awake, you can start 
picking up uh, a lot of res uh, free speed ups here from that pretty much just come from nowhere or you can just buy up tokens of other commanders then break them down in the goblin merchant and then use those to buy out uh, more gold keys or uh, epic hero tokens to level up hero tokens you uh, epic heroes that you haven't awakened yet or even just get legendary medals which will be very helpful for getting your commanders to five and six stars because it gets pretty expensive to uh, five and six star commanders uh, later on in the game especially six stars they cost around if you don't crit roughly 550 to 600 gold stars which is pretty significant amount so anything you can get for free is always welcome it doesn't matter if you're free to play or not just abuse this abuse these systems while you can because eventually they do end up getting nerfed in the future so you might as well just get the most value of it right now and then later on you can start getting lazier now plus dragon trail does give you a lot of xp as well which can help you uh, level up your commanders early on in the season and as well all this prestige that can help you skill up your policies which brings me to the second part of this tip when you are focusing on your policies i highly recommend you rush your military expansions as fast as possible and rush the way all the way to military expansion 3 rush military expansion 3 all the way full and then 2 and then 1 because as later levels go on they're all going to be costing roughly equal amount of prestige or slightly higher prestige and take roughly the same amount of time to research but uh, military expansion 3 for example provides much more legion capacity than 2 and the same goes for between 2 and 1 so you want to focus your efforts on getting 3 up as much as possible because bigger marches equals easier time in the open field against your enemies that don't have as big marches as you do and plus any advantage that you have over your enemies no matter how big or small is gonna add up eventually and you're going to end up with a pretty significant advantage than your enemies have. Plus, Indus is not really that bad. I've explained why in her video, but I'm going to leave the link to it in the card right up, up on your screen right now. Tip number four would be always have your gatherers out gathering when equipped with the correct uh, gathering artifacts, especially because it will save you a lot of time over time. I haven't really bothered leveling up my gathering artifacts just yet, but I will. But I do plan on getting them up after I'm done with all my core artifacts to level 50. So uh, having your, ga your gatherers out all, uh, on the map always, especially when you have the Wilderberg faction, will result in all of gathering reports such as this, getting you even more resources over time. And in the end, uh, the biggest benefactor for this will be you. It doesn't matter if you're free to play or pay to win. Gathering resources is always nice, and you can always save up your uh, inventory such as this for uh, an emergency. Right now, I have a personal challenge with myself that I won't open my inventory till the end of the season so to see how much I've accumulated over the duration of a season. Uh, but this tip is generally is sometimes overlooked and tying to that you want to gather you want to train around 150,000 to 200,000 of the gathering uh, troop uh, for two main reasons one uh, tier 1 uh, tier 2 and tier 3 uh, cavalry are pretty bad they're not substantially good they're not good at all they don't have that much use at all only t4 cavalry start being good so you shouldn't really bother with cavalry until you unlock T4s, and by then you should have trained a significant amount of work rhinos, work elks, or uh, work horses. It doesn't matter whichever faction you are. Uh, right now I am doing this a bit late. I know I should have trained them much sooner. Well, they're also tie into the. Uh, maximum hospital capacity because they do count as your uh, legion amounts so the more legion amounts you have the better it is and the easier it will be for you to reach the maximum hospital capacity in the end getting you an overall net bonus because well who doesn't want bigger hospitals to train more troops faster uh, or sorry heal more troops faster in the duration of the war especially if you can heal two million per day you're essentially on the field every single day with no signs of slowing down. A quick secret tip before we get to tip number five would be for spending your gems correctly and not waste any gems uh, doing stuff that are inefficient. Mainly, you should be spending your gems in the uh, VIP shop, getting the speed ups, uh, sometimes getting the artifact keys if you can afford it, getting the 
gold heads if you are a bit of a spender, a bit up there. I always try to max out all the speed ups and uh, gold heads every single week. And of course, getting stuff from the goblin mar merchant only if they are at 80%. The reason for that is because it saves up a lot of gems in the long term. It is easy to just uh, get dragged in buying out speed ups from the goblin mar merchant. And before you realize it, you'll find yourselves out of gems. That is why you should put a rule for yourself to just grab, grab it if they are at 80%. Or if it's a really good amount of speed ups at 70% discount, because, well, uh, if you just let yourself go when you're spending your gems, especially in the Goblin March, you find yourself uh, out of gems and you won't even realize where your gems went. Tip number five, and I feel like this is the most important tip in Call of Dragons, is to remember to have fun in the game. After all, while yes, it is a competitive game and it is a war game, you have to keep in mind that a, your main goal should be having fun. Crushing your enemies is also fun, <laughs> stomping plebs is also fun, but in the beginning and the end, you should prioritize your own health, your own safe well-being, your own private life over the game, uh, because after all, it is a game. And of course, subscribe to Meower. This is also the most important tip. <laughs> I'm just kidding on that part. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. This is the first time for me to making a top five tip type of format of this video. If you'd like to see more of those, do let me know in the comments below. Uh, I feel like there are a lot of other tips out there as well, but I feel like I felt like these were the few that I really felt like I should uh, put out there. Of course, if you like content like this, please don't forget to drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe. Join our Discord to interact with us. If you have any questions, if you have any video ideas, I would love to see you. I would love to interact with you and such. And on, on that note, I will see you in the next video. Meow, meow.